we look here, there's a, a plate holding a pair of these semiconductors on and those are held in with screws on the side. So five minute job and you've got you've got this thing totally opened up. Now the problem I have with this one here is when I got it it was something was rattling around inside and it turned out it was this coil. Now these coils three of these coils large one a little bit smaller one and then this one here and they're you know they they're kind of massy and so they hold them on with hot glue and in transportation they can break off they're only really mechanically held in with just their leads these copper leads and even this one here I notice has got a wiggle to it so I'll have to re uh, reapply some hot glue when I'm done but basically the job today at least on this first one here is just to uh, remove the hot glue unsolder the uh, the wires that are there currently hold that were there before take those out and uh, extend the wires from this coil insert it back in and give it a test all right I removed the old one and inserted the new one here and soldered in the, the leads. All right, so I got the coil in there, mounted and secure. This one's tightened up. In the process, I noticed uh, this little uh, AC fuse had the top blown off of it. So obviously, one of the something's shorting on the AC side. Now these are the four AC MOSFETs, and so generally one of these is shorted. And so what you need to do is take your ohm meter, put it on ohms, and then go and uh, check each one of these individually. And so I'll do that here. Not sure it's in focus, but I'll take my word for it. <clears throat> do the first one here. And I'll rate it off. I'm reading 9 mega ohms. So that's open. That's good. Next one here is reading 12 mega ohms. That's good. This one's reading a dead short. And then this one here is reading 1.4 mega ohms. So definitely we've got a bad one here. I'll probably replace both of these. And uh, we'll should be back in business. And while I'm uh, down here measuring MOSFETs, I'll look on the AC or the DC side, which would be these four MOSFETs on the left. And uh, I'll read off those mega ohms, or how many ohms there. Okay, we're reading 12.4K. .4 12.4K. .4 12.4K. .4 12.4K. <clears throat> So what this says is there's no shorts here. There probably is a resistor between those two points that are on the board that's in that 12.4 range that I'm actually measuring. But at least it tells me these four DC MOSFETs are good. Okay. Okay. So I uh, replaced this little AC fuse here. It's about a 50 cent part. I replaced this one MOSFET because in checking the other MOSFETs on the other device, uh, the other ones that I have, they, these here were reading 12 and a half kilo ohms uh, between the uh, the source and the gate, so the left pin and the right pin. So that basically meant this one was okay. And so I just replaced this one. And so before I clip the leads off, I wanted to do a test. So where they do that is I'll plug in the AC here. All right, got the AC plugged in. Here's my DC voltage source. So I've got plus and minus coming out of that over to here. So <clears throat> first good sign is I don't have a red light on that says I'm not getting a short 
on the AC side like I did originally. I'm going to start to crank up the voltage here. That'll give it enough voltage that if everything's going good, I should get my green flashing lights. So, looks like this guy's back in service. So now I just need to get him buttoned back up into the uh, enclosure and move on to the next one. Hope that was helpful. All right, got everything back together. A couple things I wanted to point out. Behind every one of these MOSFETs on this side, or the diodes that are along the back wall, there's an insulator that may that needs to be there. So when you take yours apart, make sure you account for every one of those. It might be individual pieces or it might be a long strip. Uh, there's also these brackets that are used as screw to go to the side wall. Make sure those are screwed back down nice and tight. The whole idea is these parts get hot. We want the heat to go from the part to the, the metal back piece of the part through this insulator to the heat sink, but not we don't really want the metal of the part to be touching the case because there's actually an electrical signal on each one of those uh, mounting plates there. So make sure you account for all those. Also, you'll find out that the, that the uh, material has some of this heat sink compound. It's kind of white and grease. Uh, you can buy this at Radio Shack if you don't have any, but make sure you add some a little dab on each side of that uh, insulator. When you put it back on there, it'll give you a nice good heat transfer path, and it'll be less chance that those parts will burn out in the future. So that's it. Talk to you later.